Gaffer, first and foremost, your backroom staff was something you were looking to get done as quickly as possible and you're delighted that uh, David Oldfield has agreed to be the assistant manager. Yeah, over the moon really. It's um, just to have his expertise and experience um, around me and, and my staff. Um, since he's been in, he's been he's been tremendous really. I think the boys have bought into him. Um, excellent coach, um, you know, great experience of this league in terms of what he's done with Burton Albion. Um, you know, and I think it's a great addition for the football club. Um, you know, it's it's definitely something that will help us going forward. And um, you know, I'm sure he can definitely help some of the players we've got here improve in terms of what he brings in the training ground. And hopefully, in total, that it'll, it'll, it'll make the results better for us next season. Yeah, it was good to have him in towards the back end of last season as well, so you can have a look at each other and also for the players to understand what he would demand. No, he's good. He's very demanding, very thorough. Um, um, exactly what you know when he comes in, it just says what it's, you know. See what it says in the tin, really. It's it's um, he's he's excellent. You know, in terms of what he brings, in terms of his training sessions, are really structured. Um, you know, really intense, and um, exactly what what I'm all about as well. Yeah, Mark Tyler as goalkeeping coach has, has been formalised as well, which again is important to to know you you doing early doors in the summer months certainly for the uh, new season. I think it was I think it was important um, for for Tiles really to concentrate more on his coaching. Um, one thing I did say to to Tiles is, listen, I would never ask you to retire. Um, I know Tiles still thinks he can play, which is, which is fair, and he, he probably could. Um, but uh, I want I want my coaching staff to concentrate on their coaching um, and not have their heads turned from anything else really. And I think Tiles is an excellent coach. Again, you know he's been tremendous with Luke McGee this year, um, and he, he he's only going to improve the the new number one who comes in 100% with his with his you know his experiences in the, in the football league and the amount of games he's played. So um, listen, if it gets to a stage where you know we're two or three goalkeepers short and we need Tiles to. The, the step in, he can still do that, no problems. But um, first and foremost, his job is to help the, the coaching staff, to help the players, and uh, and to take a bit more of the the mantle on, on upon himself. Yeah. All the players who've come in, if we start with the young goalkeeper Josh Tibbets, because he was actually here towards the back end of last season, so you've had a look at him, and he's got real promise. Yeah, he's excellent. Um, I think when he first came in, I think you know for the first three or four days, I think the boys couldn't believe that he was that he was so young, um, really really brave. Um, he'll throw himself in front of anything. Um, excellent with his feet, um, and he, he's, he's going to. He's got a lot of improvement to do. I think under the, you know, the, the leadership of Tiles, and you know, I think he'll help him massively. Um, he'll work with him every day. Um, he'll be in and around the first team. He'll be here to. One thing I did say to Josh is that you're, you're here to threaten um, the, the number one. And listen, if you if you're you're good enough, you're old enough, in my opinion. And if he if he comes in, he, you know, he, he can threaten the number one. I would no no chance, no sorry, no problems with playing him, n not one bit. And um, he's a good lad. Um, he's been around probably us for about nine to ten weeks now. I think he's played in a couple of twenty one games, a couple of eighteen games, and uh, I think he's a great you know good signing for us actually. And um, I think he'll have a, a very very bright future. Yeah, obviously got lists to go through in terms of the goalkeeper position. Obviously, Tiles was saying in his interview as well that he put an input in to make sure you get the right person into the club. Definitely. Um, we've, we have got a list. Um, we've probably got two or three goalkeepers who we could sign now. Um, but it's important that we get it right. I think, you know, in terms of the Luke McGee situation last year, I'd seen him probably five or six times for Tottenham um, before I even made a decision on bringing Luke, especially for the first first loan. But, you know, what a, what a, good, what a good goalkeeper he turned out to be. And, um, you know, we, we are in close contact with with, with Tottenham. Um, looked desperate to come back here, um, but we need to make sure you know we get everything right before we, we you know we and Luke gets everything right at his end before we we try and sanction the deal. Um, listen, if it if it doesn't happen, we, we've got two or three other goalkeepers who are, who are willing to come to us, and um, it's about picking the right one, the one who suits what we've got in the change room, the one who shares the same ambition as me and 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 the staff and the players that's going to be coming into the club and that's the most important thing. Danny Lloyd is uh, a bubbly character, he's um, obviously desperate to get going already and that's great when you're bringing a new sign in and he wants to get going and get pre-season st started. Well Danny Lloyd, I mean, again, someone who we watched a lot last season. Um, you know, his goals speak for himself, what he did at Stockport, I had a really good conversation with Jim Gannon over him. Um, you know, he, he's, he, I think he's something that we've missed in terms of the attacking side of the game. Um, Carries the ball really well, drives at people, excellent left foot. Um, he's only going to improve from everyday training. 
Um, you know, he's 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 been sent away with a with an off season um, program, um, just for him really in terms of what he needs to do to come back in the pre season. Um, and he's gonna, I think he's gonna be really good for us. I think the Peterborough fans will really like him. Um, really, really plays on the front foot, gets out people, likes to shoot. Um, and he is a bubbly character. I think that you know the fans will abide to him. Um, that's what happens. In, that's what happens in Chelsea. That's what happens in Chelsea. Yeah. Carry on. But uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think the fans will abide to him, and um, you know he'll, he'll get himself amongst the fans. He, he, he's, he's big into that. So. Um, uh, I'm delighted to have Danny here. He was here today. He's, he's desperate to come down already with his, you know, his, his girlfriend looking for a house. And um, those are the sort of characters that we want about the building. Um, he's, you know, he's he's over the moon that he's at, at this club, and and that's and that's what it that's what it should feel like to be at this football club. And Ricky Miller, of course, brings well should bring goals given the, his record, and uh, he's desperate to, to to really make it in football league level. Yeah, Ricky, you know, to, to make him first sign and somebody who's the you know the the player of the year in the, in the national league last year. The you know the league and goal scorer. Um, we tried to sign Ricky in January, but uh, you know being the person he was and and Dover, I think he wanted to to get the job done and finish it off there, which they just didn't. They just missed out on the playoffs, and Dover has obviously tried to keep him, and they and they did, but he just missed out. But Ricky's goal will speak for himself, I think, and um, he he's a boy who has grown up around this area. Um, he's always wanted to play, play for Peterborough. Um, he had four or five different clubs in League One um, chasing him, and it was a testament to him that as soon as I spoke to him, um, he wanted to sign for us. And again, we, we, I spoke a lot last year about the hunger and the passion to play for this football club, and I think Ricky's got that. Um, he's got that in abundance, and I can't wait to get started. Um, you know, I've, I've been in touch with him already, and again, he's looking for a house around the area. Um, someone who wants to, you know. A buy into what we're doing, um, and you know that 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 speaks speaks volumes for himself, you know, for itself really, and um, really really looking forward to working with him and and trying to improve him. Barry's working his socks off us to get players out of the door that he wants out the door. He's already done a couple, and that's important that those those deals are done early doors as well. I think it's important for 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 the players really, um, so that they can enjoy the summer break really, knowing where they're going to be next year. Um, one thing I'd, I'd advise the, the rest of the lads who are on the transfer list is to, is to do that because um, I will have a squad together next year who will be with me and they don't want to be a part of the squad that's not going to be with me. That that's, that that's was made very clear to them when they, when they left the club and uh, for, for their summer break. So um, I, I, I want to say thanks to, to Lee and, and, and Hayden really for, for their time here. I texted both of them yesterday and sent me a message back saying thank you very much. So. Um, Listen, they're going to a club who um, I think the manager's having a, a right good go there at Mansfield and good luck to both of them. Um, the rest of them, yes, we're, we're, we're working hard. Barry's constantly on the phone trying to trying to move them out and, and get you know get them to the right clubs. And, um, you know, hopefully the players can start helping us because, you know, as a football player, you don't want to begin into the summer thinking, where am I going to be um, at the end of July, early August? Because um, a lot of clubs will have already had their signings by then. So... Um, we are working hard um, to try and move a few on. I think we're close in another couple, um, and hopefully that will give us um, some leeway to try and bring one, two, one or two others in. And just finally, in terms of the pre-season schedule, in terms of the friendly games, was that important as well to get the right games in for you in terms of going into the new campaign? Obviously, three championship sides at home, a few clubs at non-league level, and obviously a couple of league, league, league levels as well away from home. Is that important to get the right balance for what you're looking for? It, it was all about the minutes, really. Um, the games were picked really in terms of who we were playing against on what day and and what standard of opposition we wanted. Um, but it was more more important to get um, the 45 minutes in in the first game, two of those, the the 60 minutes in the second game, um, and then the you know the 90s and 90s and, and, and instruction it that way. So it was important, and it's it's been really really fine tuned the way myself and Ben McKenzie have, have set the games out and. You know, in the 120 minute game as well. You now we've got two of those, which is um, key is to get the two sixties in at the same time, so everyone gets the same amount of minutes. So, um, yeah, we're happy with the pre-season games. Um, all about getting the boys fit, sharp, and and ready for the season.